Hey there, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna talk about whether or not when you eat has an impact on your body's ability to oxidize fat or burn fat for fuel or preferentially pivot your body into burning more sugar or carbohydrates for fuel. I'm Mike Mutzel and you're tuning in to High Intensity Health. As always, I'm excited. I'm grateful that you're here. It's good to see your face again. Well, I can't really directly see you. I can see your comments. I can see your likes. So if you enjoy this video, definitely hit that like button and comment below because I like to get to know you and help you out. I like to follow the comments as much as I can. So let's dive into the study. The title of the study is called, the title of the study is, Eating Breakfast and Avoiding Late Evening Snacking Sustains Lipid Oxidation. This study was published in on February 28th. As I record this, it's the 2nd of March. I reread the study twice just to get some ideas and some insights. It was published at Vanderbilt University and it kind of piggybacks off research that we've already talked about on this channel before, which I'll link right here. This was a group, Dr. Okanoa, I think was his name, uh, Dr. Omi, and a few other researchers. What they did is, is very short-term uh, metabolic chamber studies where they had individuals either eat breakfast or skip breakfast, and they looked at their respiratory quotient, which is a way to characterize whether or not a human is oxidizing lipids or oxidizing carbohydrates. And these feeding studies that the Japanese group that we already, re that we already reviewed last fall, what they showed is there was a small but statistically significant difference uh, in fat oxidation in the individuals that ate earlier and had breakfast. Now, let me just pause. I'm not excited about this study or those studies because it does confirm my bias, but you need to understand my biases so that you can see why I get excited about these studies. I've said for many years, I, sh I advise my clients, eat early and sleep early. It's what I do. I start my eating window earlier in the day and I cut it off earlier in the day. I find for me, it helps me stay lean. It helps my clients stay lean. It's something my wife and I do. We try to avoid late night snacking, eating late night meals. Now, when we were in South America, we were in Santiago, Chile, people don't start eating until 9 p.m. So in that culture, you know, if that's part of your culture, then just figure out workarounds for that. You wanna be social. You don't wanna be a social outcast and sit around and not eat because social isolation, in my estimation, and based upon the research that I've read, is just as bad as eating unhealthy food. So now that you know my biases and you need to consider the cultural differences that may be at play with regards to your meal windows, let's continue on and dive into the study. What makes this study that, again, was conducted by metabolic researchers and scientists at Vanderbilt University, the thing that's, there's pros and cons to the study. There was only six subjects, six <laughs> subjects in the study, but it was randomized and it was a crossover design, meaning that individuals were randomized either to eat the late night snack at 10 p.m. right before bed or to have that same energy equivalent meal for breakfast and then still have their uh, lunch and dinner and things along those lines. So six subjects, but it was a crossover randomized design. They included both men and women and the other major distinguishing or, or the second, and there's three major distinguishing factors about this study compared to the other studies that we've already talked about is, is this. Uh, number two is that these subjects were older. Uh, the average age was between 51 and 63 years old. So in, this, in the study, in the research article that we talked about, in the video that we reviewed last fall, the Japanese group, uh, those study subjects were, I think the average age was like 25. So a little bit older because as we know, the older that we get, the more carbohydrate intolerance, the more insulin resistant we become, the more inflamed we become. So it's good to study a subset or a cohort of the population that is susceptible to metabolic disease. Now, the third, but I think most significant part and characterization of this study is that this was a 56 hour study within a metabolic chamber. So the individuals were able to leave the room for just 20 to 30 minutes a day. They were watched. They all had activity monitors on in both arms of the study so they can characterize and quantify and see if there's any significant differences in uh, energy expenditure and movement. And I'll just let you know right now, there was none. That's what's unique. Although they did show statistically significant differences in fat oxidation in the breakfast eaters compared to the late night snackers, even though energy output, meaning energy expenditure per the um, uh, activity monitor and uh, energy intake per you know the controlled meals that were given to the study subjects were identical. So eating earlier in the day Oh, and one last thing, the fasting window was entirely the same. It was 14 hours in both groups. So that's what's kind of interesting uh, about the findings of the study. 
older subjects. It was a 56 hour study within a metabolic chamber where gases and, and oxygen and CO2 and all these different things were measured. Uh, but because it was only a 56 hour study, individuals are not going to live in a metabolic chamber for months at a time. There was, wasn't any differences in body weights. You wouldn't expect to see major swings and differences in 56 hours. Uh, if people are eating the same type of foods, but to make a long story short, and here's kind of the climax or the punchline of this entire video is that there was an increase of 15 grams of fat oxidized in the breakfast eating group compared to the group that had the 10 p.m. late snack. Again, the breakfast and the late night snack were energy equivalent. It was a 700 calorie. I didn't look at all the macronutrients that's in the supplementary materials, which I actually don't have for the study, but I will go back and look at it. Um, you know, so again, basic parameters of the study is the breakfast arm uh, of the study, the group ate between 10 and uh, sorry, between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. They had a 700 calorie meal, then they had lunch and dinner. Um, and then what the other folks did in the snack, the late evening snack, is they just didn't have any food until lunch, and then they had dinner, and then the, the 700 calorie snack at around 10 p.m., and then went to bed shortly thereafter. And again, the clinical significance for you as someone who presumably wants to maintain an ideal body composition, balance blood sugar, optimize health and longevity, is when that snack, 700 calories, when, when you push those 700 calories just before bedtime, what was seeing is a, re a reduction in fat oxidation and an increase in carbohydrate oxidation. And what that translates into from a quantitative standpoint was 15 grams of reduced fatty acid oxidation through the entire evening. Now, one thing that you need to understand, we've talked about at length throughout this channel on these videos, on these podcasts that we've been doing since 2014, we've talked a lot about circadian rhythms. You need to understand that your body's you know, metabolic machinery is not static. During the day, we tend to oxidize more carbohydrates and during the evening and sleeping hours, the kind of rest hours is when our mitochondria are really active, we're oxidizing a lot of fat for fuel. And so based upon this, again, relatively small study, uh, but it was a randomized crossover design, what we see is when we introduce a 700 calorie meal just before bedtime, it seems to perturb the body's ability to oxidize lipids while we're sleeping. And that translates again into 15 grams of reduced fat oxidation. Now, if you multiply that out by 365 days, multiple years, you can see how maybe a lot of late night snacks and late meals uh, can lead to possible weight gain and alterations in blood glucose and fat oxidation throughout the lifespan. So that's what this study showed. I think it's interesting. It you know doesn't really change how I'm going to do things. Maybe it will change what you do. I do read a lot of your comments, a lot of your questions, both here on YouTube and also on Instagram. And people say, hey, I'm a shift worker. I get off late. If I just push my feeding window you know, to say, I don't break my fast until 2 p.m. and I cut it off at 11, Personally, I think that's late. That's on the late side. Um, so I, again, you know my biases. These are just my biases because I used to be a competitive cyclist. In the cycling world, the lighter you are and the stronger you are, the better your power to weight ratio is, the faster you are. So I was always trying to stay lean so I could be faster on the bike, assuming I didn't catabolize muscle mass. And the mantra in cycling was eat early and sleep early because sleep is so important for recovery and everything else. So that's what I've been doing. It's worked for me. It may not work for you. Again, if you live in a Latin American culture, if you're in Europe where people are going out super late at night, just be social, do what you can, figure figure out how you can you know affect your sleep and sleep-wake cycles appropriately because I, I do think that social connections and eating with people probably supersedes or trumps, you know, eating by yourself at an ideal time. I think if you had to pick one or the other, I would say be social, eat with your friends, your family, and do all that sort of stuff and, and maybe try to change your exercise, exercise routines or things along those lines. So um, I would love to know what you think, what works for you. Links are below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to take advantage and also support uh, our platform and our channel, uh, what we offered through our branded MyoScience company is a berberine hydrochloride formulation paired with alpha lipoic acid. It's honestly one of the best natural products to support blood sugar health. I found it can crank up my ketones and affect my glucose in a favorable manner. So I have a coupon code for you. It's AMPK over at our website, myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. Again, the coupon code to save 12% off is AMPK because that's the enzyme that berberine affects and that enzyme is involved in a bunch of different 
healthy metabolic processes. So links are below there, and I appreciate you watching all the way through. We'll catch you on a future episode down the road. Have a good one. Bye now.